Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you Hi, are yeah. in the world. Who's here? Who's watching? Who's here? My mom said she was going to be here today. I I was so heartbroken after last week. She didn't show up. She was heartbroken too. I told her she said she had an appointment and she couldn't come. She getting her nails done, her hair done. What was it? I think it was a doctor. Oh uh, well, I'll oh, give her that one. I'll give her that. <laughs> who, who's this down here? <laughs> is, who is that? I don't know who that is. I was like Debbie. I don't know who it is. <laughs> Hello, Debbie. Hello. We have a uh, Debbie here for our later talk about the profile improvement project or PIP. Pip, pip. And I wonder if pip, I wonder if Pip will be here today for the Pip. That would be that would be appropriate. Wouldn't it be appropriate for Pip to see the Pip presentation? Pip to see the Pip. Mm -hmm. It's all about alliteration. Let's see how many times we can say a word with a P in it today. Positively. <laughs> Probably. Pink. Look, Tommy <laughs> Buck is here. Tres Ferriello. Uh, <laughs> Joanna, hey mom. Um, uh, oh my goodness, you didn't have to tell us. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you went my for mom the boot. doesn't care. You went for the squishy, <laughs> the squishy test. Um, Janine Lay Esselman Goodson's here. Um, I dusted <laughs> off the last cannoli cheesecake. It was delicious. That's just rude to say first thing in the morning. I'm just sorry. That's just I was going to say, I had cold pizza for breakfast. It was wonderful. Cold pizza. For, I had Cheerios. Pizza. Look at this. Look, pizza. Pip is here. Pip is here for the hey, Pip. 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 We were talking about you, Pip. You were. Uh, Hi, Sarah's mom. Oh, you said it. I wasn't gonna say that on live, live on the air. Yeah, my mom. Is, yeah, mom I'm it. not gonna. I'm not gonna say it either. <laughs> I'm not either. I would. Oh no, <laughs> I'm not sure. Chris would like that. The big Chris, the wiki, wiki trier and chief Chris. Mm. Yes. Was everybody doing good this morning or yeah. this evening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did I say, did we say hi to Amy? Hi, Amy. I didn't see Amy come in. Where is Amy? She's stuck in. I don't believe that. <laughs> hey, Amy. I don't see her in the list. She's there. She's between um, two of my moms. Look here, I'm gonna post it. There's Amy. Oh, hey, Amy. <laughs> is it snowing in your house yet? It's best to know it can here. <laughs> yeah, Amy agrees that she was sneaky. You sneaky girl. Yeah. Well, thank goodness Debbie knows that this is, we, we always wait for the lag to catch up by just kind of hanging out saying, I hate it, everybody. So if you're wondering what's going on. Not a problem. We haven't started anything important, really important yet. So if you're just popping in, just saying hi. So I guess the snow will start here in about 30 minutes then, or 40 minutes, Amy. <clears throat> yeah, Amy's oh. 45 minutes to an hour west of me. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? So she's, so she's getting snow, so you're going to get snow shortly. Well, and obviously they're not, they didn't give me the right information. Rude weather people. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So... So I guess we have everybody that's going to be here at the moment. Yeah. What is, do we have a question of the week this week, Meg? We do. We do really a really good one, a really fun one. Um, let me share my screen. Actually, let me move you guys over here so that I can share my screen. There we go. There we go. Question of the week. I'll make it biggie big. So have you ever found diaries or journey journals from your ancestors? About uh, 34 answers, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in this. Uh, nice question. Thank you, Awen, for posting that. Lots of people had comments about, yes, they did. And some of the, some of the information that they found were, was really 
really interesting. One person down the line here said that they discovered tapes, like cassette tapes, that their mother interviewed their grandfather before he died. That's a gold mine. I love that. Um, so yeah, lots of great answers. Um, uh, Thomas had one about his Eric Arthur Otto van, van Hippel, uh, a, a copy of his memoirs. Um, and then uh, uh, first Native American woman journalist while traveling with her husband, Yellowbird woman, first Native American uh, woman journalist. That's pretty cool from Anonymous Beecher. Uh, moving on down, lots of, uh, no diaries and journals, but I did find a wonderful school book from the 1814 from the Ostrom ancestors. It contains a lease and a record of a boy's farm work for a neighbor. You know, a lot of people found those things. And, and when I was going through my grandparents' stuff, I found places where my grandmother had written notes about our family or things on like pieces of receipts or bank deposit slips, which is hilarious. Uh, Chris Ferriello, which is pretty infamous, infamous guy here on Winky Tree. Uh, he hasn't found any diaries or journals, but he's found some letters from his grandpa uh, that he sent home from World War II. I do. I have a stack of letters that my granddad sent home too. So that's cool. Uh, lots of lots of letters, lots of uh, POW time. Um, Dieter uh, Lawrence says that he got uh, his wife's paternal grandmother's some letters uh, grand from his grandfather, I guess, to his grandmother while he was a POW uh, in Russia in 1943. Um, Kathy Forbes, uh, great-grandfather, Louis Cass White, started his diaries in 1861 when he was 18 and wrote his diary almost every day for at least 10 years, which is really cool. Um, there's one here that I thought was fun. Uh, not that one. Is it that one? Yeah. Um, no, not that one. Here's a picture. So we have a cool picture. This one is really interesting. This is about the Tulsa race ma massacre. And if you don't know anything about it, Google it. it it's a, it's a horrible massacre, um, murder in the streets, but, um, his, um, Alexis, again, Alexa, turn on the light. Alexis uh, Nelson, uh, great aunt Nora Long's husband, William Chuck Phillips, wrote memories about the Tulsa Race Massacre. Uh, he was 19 when he and his friends spent the evening of June 1st, 1921, witnessing the massacre. His writings were never published, and the whole thing was hidden for several years, for a lot more than seven years, because a lot of people don't know about it. Um, <clears throat> he later became a well-respected Tulsa police officer and his manuscript is called Murder in the Streets. Um, cool. That's great. Fun. Um, Kim Williams, or uh, uh, Joyce Vander Bogart posted some stuff. Vic Watt, um, diaries that his mother and father kept while they were dating each other. So you could see stuff. My mother kept a little journal about stuff that when my father and she were dating, but I don't understand it because it's only for like one weekend. Why didn't she write more? Um, let's see. And I have a couple down here. There's one. Let's see. Here we go. This is um, uh, from one of the question of the week answers from Frank Blankenship about the Brumfield, the Julia uh, Ann Craddock Brumfield diary. She kept a diary from 1915 to 1936, and she has um, people signed up to do transcriptions. And this is kind of an interesting site. I've never heard of it. Uh, this is a project by Ben W. Brimfield, and you can see that there's a bunch of, bunch of pages. But there's also inf information about statistics that you can see on this page about people who've done transcriptions. Uh, pages that have been indexed, references, how many collaborator, collaborators. So pretty cool little site. And uh, specific subjects also that have been looked at. Um, milked, burned, churned, cooking. Not cooking, but cooking. C-O-O-K-I-N. Daylight saving time, hung up the meat, packed, plant bed, sewed. Interesting. That's an interesting little site about 
getting a collaborative project together to transcribe a book. That was really cool. Um, there was another one that we saw from somebody about um, the John Dyer of Dyer's Town. Let me see if I can figure out who that was. Um, let's see, gets on down. Lots of great, great uh, information. Postcards. People were talking about, oh, they didn't find any po um, journals, but they found a postcard. Uh, letters from my great grandmother to my great grandfather, Hillary. Where's Hillary? Is Hillary in here today? Hey, mm -hmm. Hillary. Oh, she Thank just you. mentioned it. She yes, she did. Like, she's like channeling to me. My sister found some letters from my father had written that my father had written, and I have scanned them uh, from my great grandmother to my great grandfather on my blog. Um, so did you post your blog here? Let's check this out. If you did, yep. Here is uh, Hillary's blog that she posted. Isn't that Ooh. crazy cool? So, Hillary, if you have this letter, are you going to get the stamp DNA tested? It's a question. You can do that now, you know. But who licked the stamp? Was it him? Was it the postmaster? So, are you going to get DNA back and think you're related to the postmaster? Inter interesting. You might be. Uh, you may be. Scandalous. <laughs> Scandalous. Um, <laughs> there's, there's two pages, and um, this family search thing was... Um, John Dyer from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. And then there was the, the whole journal information, which is here. So there's lots and lots of great information. I suggest that you go over, check it out. Pip had one too. Pip, I don't mean to leave you out. Uh, there you go. Yes, I have a diary of my grandfather, one he kept in Houston, Texas, while living there from 1911 to 1960. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of great questions of the week. Uh, check them out and enjoy. Yeah, I have letters that, <clears throat> well, my grandmother wrote lots of memoirs. I also have postcards that my dad sent my grandma when he was um, traveling through Europe, mostly asking for more money to be sent to him. Of course. <laughs> I got my grandmother's um, travel journal when my mom took her to Germany to see her son. So. Nice. I kept a journal when the kids were young, uh, just a journal about everyday struggles and challenges and, and celebrations and victories. Um, and they're, they're up there. There's about four of them that are about this thick. It, it, I don't think I want to ever go read them. I don't know. <laughs> uh oh, apparently my dad heard that I was talking about him. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um is he gonna come online do they do they have two computers at home sarah usually he watches over i think he's like in the background while my mom's watching so i don't know breathing down <laughs> her neck what is she saying now <laughs> so amy says that my family has the letters my great uncle wrote to my grandma and grandpa during world war ii they're in the local museum that's fun. That's fun. That's in Renfrew, I guess. No, where are you? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> it's, Max has to go to that museum now. I've been meaning to go out and meet Amy for a coffee when I'm at the cottage. My The cottage that I go to is very close, not too far from where she lives. Yep. So, cool. What's up next? Photo of the week. I heard somebody, Pip, told me that there were some really cool pip pictures in the photo of the week, Pip. <laughs> well, photo of the week is not yet. First, we have to do the profile of the, profile of the week. Oh. oh, do them out of order. Oh, that's okay. I, I don't know. I feel like the photos are good. Like, <laughs> like the, and we have a cool photo from that photo. Profile of the week. It's We have a whole bunch of rock stars, like uh, yeah. Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> Um, I was, and we have all these other rock stars, um, John Bonham, Jimi Hendrix, Bonham, um, uh, Bon Scott, um, uh, Michael, Michael Hutchins, Dave McCarthy, Chrissy, Amphlet, this is gone slow, Ronnie Zan 
Ronnie Van Zant and Janis Joplin. Janis Joplin was actually one of my, I was actually tied 22 degrees to a couple of them. Janis Joplin was Janis my closest. Joplin. <laughs> Janis Joplin was my closest at 15, I think. I think mine was 18, if I remember right. She's related to me through my mother. I think they were all through my grandmother as usual. Let me see. Um, so we have well, actually, actually through my father, through the Key family. So we have the Eddie Van Halen. He just recently passed away in October. He did of throat yeah. cancer, unfortunately. Um, he was listed as number eight in the hundred greatest guitarists of all time. Yes, all and that is him. his guitar is the background there, by the way. His, uh, what was the name of his uh, guitar? Um, it, it had a name. What was the name of it? Come on, guys. Think together. It's not in the summary. Oh, no. Okay. Well, we can look at his Wikipedia page real quick. Frankenstrat. That was the name of his guitar. Oh, so it was a Stratocaster. Okay, cool. I knew it was something like weird like it's like frankenstein frankenstein frankencaster um so then we have uh bonzo or john bonin and led the drummer of led zeppelin <clears throat> um jimmy hendrix you know jimmy hendrix um bon scott ACDC. Um, I don't think I've heard of him before. Probably a newer backup co founder and leader of Inks. Oh, in excess. Oh, in Australia. Oh, Australia. In Anybody in Australia know, know this band? Recognize the band now in excess? I know the band very well. Yeah. I don't know the band. And that's not dating us because they're no. Yeah. <laughs> so we have an, a New Zealander um, rock star, Dave McCartney, um, Chrissy Implet. Not, she has a well written bi biography. And then Ronnie Van Zant, born in Florida. Look, born in Jacksonville. Look at that. Um, Leonard Skinner. Yeah, I don't suppose you know that one either, Sarah. <laughs> I have. I'm. The name is familiar. I don't think I've listened to a lot of their stuff, but I know the name of the band. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then Janis Joplin. So. Um. And then those are our rock stars. Who did anybody say who they were closest connect to in the chat? No, David Bowie. Isn't David Bowie still alive? No, David alive? died. No, He's David old. died. But is he a, a rock star? Yes, he is. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how they the yes, he's a rock no star. A pop star or a rock star or a country star? Is this I would say Elvis was a rock star. He's the father of rock and roll. Yeah, but I feel like like these are, I don't know, like they're, I don't know. Cause these, I don't know, I'm gonna stop talking. Yes, Sarah is so young. <laughs> mm, yes. uh, yeah, but I, like my mom said, I listen to music with them, so I'm familiar. With. So, Joanna, she should be able to commiserate with us on this, right, Debbie? You would think, but you, you know, think, and yeah. listening know, to and knowing what they them. are are two different things. <laughs> okay, so let's 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 change let's, topics. Let's move right <laughs> along. <laughs> um, now we can go to the photo of the week, which apparently somebody really wants. It. Oh no, don't close it. Okay. <clears throat> so our theme this week is people. 
theme this week is winter. Oh, the first one already looks amazing. This is the best snowman I've ever seen in my life. That snowman. I love that. Yeah. He has a little hat. <laughs> I wonder if she made the hat. Oh, it's probably a hand-knitted hat. Do I you think that she even... actually made the snowman or did she just pose with it? Um, I hope she made it and then posed with it. That would be the best. So here's my assessment. It's an early snow because there's lots of leaves, mm -hmm. meaning they hadn't cleared the leaves before they made the snowman. So it's an early snowman. Might even be first snow. Yeah. That's I mean, this is another great snowman. What it is. It's like square. How cute. That is pretty cute. It's like the uh it looks like the uh, creeper from from uh, Minecraft. <laughs> I was thinking yeah. it looked like uh the Pillsbury Berry Doughboy with his chef's hat on. <laughs> kind of looks yeah, kind of looks like that. I have Dortha and Ida. I want to see more snowmen. Um, here's Dan in the snow. It looks like he's like frolicking and like, no, it looks like he's getting ready to pelt the, the photographer with a snowball that's back yeah. behind him. Oh, that is well, kind of, well, just. I like my what, what I thought it was like. It's kind of like the side as he was walking. But yeah, it's, it's a snow. Like the, the lens of the camera. That person's about to get a very cold snow to the face. Walter Wood and his son, Ronald, in the snow in Pennsylvania. Oh no, I went too far back. Ooh. Ski in Norway. Where is this? Norway. Oh, skiing. They look so fancy in their uh, outfits. Your audio just went. Is it better now? It's getting there. Oh. How dare my audio. <clears throat> oh, that looks like a fun photo. Digging out the neighbors. Looks like home. <laughs> Except our snow looks bank. Like I'm glad I'm in Florida. <laughs> By uh, February, March, our snow banks are, are like 8, 10, 12 feet high. <laughs> no, that's okay. What is, what is guarding the cat skills aqueducts during World War One? That's a cold. He looks. Dog. Pretty, yeah, he looks warm though in his big coat. He does, but I'm not sure how warm those those wraps were that they put on their legs. Yeah. Um, no, this is Rat. a gigantic snowman. This Rat. is this is why I'm here. Snowman. That's crazy. Do you think that's like a actual snowman that somebody made or like a, like a, I don't know. It looks like there's a glass lantern hanging from its hand, mm -hmm. hang something glass or something that's going to melt soon. Yeah. It'd be kind of awesome if the snowman was that. It's a Canada, Ontario, Canada. Thunder Bay. That's Thunder. Northern, Northern Ontario, which is really, not very far north, Ontario. These babies look very unhappy. Would you? I hated having to dress up in, in like 15 layers and then you couldn't move. <laughs> we had um, one of my sons, we would put on his snowsuit, have it all done and all zipped up. And he would he would just wait until we were done. As soon as we were done, he would unzip it, take it all off because he wanted to put it on. So then we'd have to wait for him to put it back on, which was an interesting thing. <laughs> it's probably in one of those journals up there. <laughs> this that does is not look uh, like a winter picture. It's dad checking the water depth across the floodway after heavy winter rains. You know, it doesn't snow everywhere in winter, Max, like where Debbie and I are. <laughs> but it's still winter. Yes, Pip. Oh, which one was Pip's photo? I guess Pip had a photo, but I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know. He just told Alicia me. Alicia and Agnes meet photo. Yeti hunting home. And it looks like there's a horse there. That's also why. Look, there's a little carriage. 
Is that a horse and sleigh? Yeah, or? there's two people inside. Like yeah. That's cute. February 4th, 1915. Yep. In Iowa. That one. <laughs> in Toronto. Uh, it's from Ron. That's, that's a good one. one. I love the pictures of the week. Me too. Let's see if we have anything fun in the G2G post. Okay. Oh, look. There's one we didn't see. My sister had so many clothes that she could hardly move, but she loved the snow. She does look very happy. I don't know. She looks kind of happy to me. Yes, that's why I said she. Oh, looks she's happy. very happy. Sorry. Mm -hmm. We don't have volcanoes in Florida, Chris. Crazy. What do you? What do we? We're not in Hawaii. We're in so here's one in Germany. I'm assuming. Yep. Um, yep. From Dieter. This family house with my wife in the small village of Haderfeld. I probably said that wrong, but. Apparently, the paternal grandfather of my wife built the right part in the mid-1950s. Her father built the left part in the mid-1970s. Nice. Very cool. Oh, look. This was taken. It was 1924. Two more photos showing the stages of post all of the snowmen. I want to see all the phases, Alexis. Yeah. Are they all there? I hope so. Let's go look real quick. Um... Oh, he hadn't changed any from his picture. <laughs> wow, great pigs. A lot of pictures. Oh, wow. Was that a cute little teddy bear? Yes. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. We're on a, we uh, made a sec, we're on a tangent. Look, but we're looking for more snowman photos. I don't see any. Alexis, you are fired. Oh, look. I know. He's been in the photo of the week before. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alexis, you have a mission to post the other stages of those photos. Yes. <laughs> she did She did build the snowman. Wow. She built it. That's impressive. My dad at the age of seven, same behavior I would have expected from him at age 57. Cold weather <laughs> never kept him from having a good time. Everyone was fair game. Ah. <laughs> okay, Hold. here you go. <laughs> Hula dance in, in the snow. snow. <laughs> <laughs> This is my mom in California in the winter of 1945. Apparently, she thought it would be a guest to wear her hula skirt in the snow. She was in high school at the time. That is really funny. Did she post it like six times? Looked like it. Really wanted to make, sh make sure we saw the yeah. image. <laughs> okay, there's a snow, snow drift. That's, that's a snow bank. That is, or um, it could be called a plow row. They call that a plow row. Yeah. 1944, where is that? Does anybody know? Um, I look. Nine, wow. <clears throat> I was trying to, oops, I don't know. Doesn't cool. say, but. So here's my mother and uncle with their grandfather in Winchester, Massachusetts in 1934. Fun. Chris White. Here's how we dress during the winter in California. Oh, it's missing. What <coughs> was missing? Oh, no. Uh, I upload a picture of my great grandfather, James Edward Compton, on the porch of his home in Massachusetts after a snowstorm in approximately 1950. So this looks like a some horses no, tractor pull. Horse pictures that I already posted. Oh wait, fun northern Minnesota 1960s. 
Oh, here's a big snowman. Okay, let's see if he's real. Uh, biggest snowman I've ever seen. Well, apparently it's the biggest snowman she's ever seen, so I guess it was made of snow. That's in Thunder Bay as well. There, in here even, during our Balden Age, we have a winter festival and we have sculptures and snowmen that are crazy. Oh, we have this. Uh, There's actually uh, somebody in that picture, you know. Yeah, I know. Right there. That or it's a ghost. Oh. So, yeah, they've never seen snow in Western Australia, but they get um, rain. In Australia, their winter is not now. It's from June to August. So. And we have the drunk Santa. Drunk Santa. <laughs> we have no evidence <laughs> that this man is drunk. Although, is he is he holding a glass at least under there? Or is he just yeah? There's. A um, I hope. I hope so. Look, yeah, yeah. It looks like he's holding a something glass. Fun, okay. fun pictures. Yes, thank you, everybody. Yes, Pip. Hey, Pip. Guess what we're getting ready to talk about, Pip? Not about you. No. <laughs> Not about Pip. But we are going to yes. be talking about Pip. That's why we have Debbie here. Debbie, what is Pip? Oh, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> she's gone. Oh, she'll be right back. So that that I guess is just one of the funniest things that's going to happen to me today. That's wonderful. So I guess I will tell everybody what PIP is. PIP is the Profile Improvement Project, P-I-P. -I um, it's the project that improves profiles in a gist of it, you know. I think that covers... <laughs> Pip says somebody save Mags. I know. I get, <clears throat> I have asthma, and if somebody makes me laugh really hard, my asthma kicks in. I was getting ready to pull that up for you, Sarah. <clears throat> Go for it, girlfriend. Okay. So I was going to show the, I'm going to find that project on here. Profile improvement project. Okay. So we've kind of discussed profile improvement, the profile improvement project kind of on Wednesday and the previous week with dates. Um, I don't know. So Debbie's the project leader, <laughs> Kylie is the project leader and they have a whole bunch of sub projects as well, which I plan on doing other live casts about the sub projects like the unknown project. Um, I, w I wish Debbie would come back. I wasn't really prepared. And Max is gone too. I'm all by myself. <laughs> okay. So we'll just keep going because I'm by myself. Um, okay. So how to join the Profile Improvement Project. So Debbie moved the laptop to the desk and forgot to plug in the battery. So she's dead and Max isn't here either. So this is the GTG post for the profile improvement project. You have to go on the voyage. So there's a PIP voyage. When Debbie comes back, she can talk about this. PIP, have you been on the PIP voyage? I want to know. Yeah, I know I am all alone. It is poor Sarah all alone. At least, yes, at least I have all of you who are watching. You're not alone. <laughs> you, well, you disappeared. I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, I know Debbie will be back. <laughs> no, my stress level did increase. It was more of a, um, just a funny moment. I, 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 why do we have a profile improvement project, Sarah? 
why to yeah. I don't why why do we have any project it's to you improve the overall health of our oh, yes, I, know, I, know, I know I know to help to 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 bring people together to improve profiles um, kind of a coordinated effort to focus on certain aspects of the profiles to improve them um, so Pam says she's currently on the PIP voyage. Yeah. How, how is that going, Pam? Are you enjoying the PIP voyage? Turn your camera on and come join us. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, PIP is the captain of the ship. Debian Hogue tablets. There we go. <laughs> Is she, Debbie? Are I hear Debbie? dogs barking. Did your dogs eat your homework? Uh oh. There she is. But she's frozen. I'm sort of here. I'm still the laptop up, but I went ahead and on the, okay. on the tablet, and it's probably going to break up. We were. Uh, Kind of discussing the PIP voyage. Um, kind of, yeah. Kind of discussing it. <clears throat> so the goal of the voyage is to demonstrate the skills needed to improve profiles to their most complete state using the community-developed guidelines. What are the community-developed guidelines? Let's check. Oh, I guess just goes to the help page. Um, just with the citations and the biography and all the locations and dates and all of that good stuff. Um, winter in Florida, Debbie is frozen. Oh, look, Debbie's in two places at once. Do, 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 Give me a second. Do, do, do. It's two of Debbie. You can <laughs> never have Debbie. Never have Debbie. There's only one of me now. When you're in Florida, Debbie is frozen. I love that pip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Good thing you're back. Can you I see was... me? Yes. Welcome back, Debbie. Thanks. Sorry about that. I um brought the laptop in here so I had better light and then forgot to plug it in. Minor details. Oh, that and it was perfect timing too. <laughs> I mean, it was yeah. like boom. So let's I, I didn't, I didn't panic Pip? at all. Hey Pip, do you know what Pip is? Hey Debbie, what's Pip? Pip's the profile improvement project. <laughs> we got that far. <laughs> so the project itself is a an umbrella project for a bunch of the lower level projects, the sorcerers, the um Data Doctors, the Unknowns Project, the Disproven Existence Project, etc. But in addition to being the umbrella project for all of those, it's also it's it's recently started to be the way that we can help new members who aren't country specific project members develop their skills in how to create good profiles. And we're doing that with the PIP voyage where a member comes in and they pick two profiles from their own watch list. They have to be 19th or 20th century. So we're looking for low hanging fruit profiles. We're not looking for the hard ones. We want them to be able to learn the skills on profiles that should be fairly easy to source. And so they pick them from their own watch list. These aren't orphans. They're the people that new people really care about. They want to get their family onto, onto WikiTree. And so we want to help them learn the skills to get their family on in a well-developed manner. We teach them to use, teach them how to source if they don't know how. We teach them to use inline sourcing so that the individual bits and pieces have a way to tell where those came from. We teach them to do formatting so that they can get them looking correct, etc. Um, we teach them how to add 
images to their profiles if they want to. And I'll tell you, scroll all over that because I can't see it. So you're not going to bother me. <laughs> Um, you know, we teach them to use the style guidelines and show them how to find the FAQs on how to create different things. Who's are you looking at? Oh, you're looking at the sample profiles? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, the sample profiles that are on that page are from our guides. We have five guides currently. Myself, Robin Shawls, um, Leander Ford, who specializes in England and Australia. We have... Kylie Hayes, who is my co-leader, and she specializes in Germany and Australia. And then we have um, Melissa Jameson. Jameson. Yeah, I was going to say, I always want to give her another name, but it's Jameson. And she's our brand. She's our newest guide and is getting up to speed. We generally have about five voyagers each that we're working with so we can handle about 20 25 voyagers at any one time and we've seen as people are going through it and developing their skills they're talking about it more and so we're getting more and more people wanting to do it we recently um partnered with the australia project and we are they are recommend if people need to learn how to do profiles, they're recommending they go through the voyage rather than starting their own trail. And then with Leandra and Kylie both being from Australia and having good backgrounds in Australian sources, if we need help with sourcing, then they jump in and help the Australia members find better sources. So that was the way they decided to go rather than just start a trail like there is in England and in Scotland. Very cool. We had Pam in here saying that she's currently loving the voyage. She's currently on the voyage. She is. She's just asked me this morning to do her review on her first um, voyage profile. So I've got that to do this afternoon after I get done with our chat. Ooh. How do you, how, what do you, is it kind of like grading a paper? Kind of, yeah. We, um, we go through, we look to see that there are inline citations for every fact. We are verifying that the facts that are in the data fields match the facts that are in the biography. We advise on adding links to the various other profiles and making sure that the um, sources cross both. So if you've got a child listed for a parent, you want to make sure that there's a source showing that that child and parent belong to each other, et cetera. Um, and then you just, you, you go down through it and you make a list and then you refer it back to the Voyager with links to the FAQs that explain how to do it and give them a little more information on the whys to do it. Because sometimes our facts for FAQs, facts, not F-A-C-T-S, facts, um, sometimes our frequently asked questions pages give the why really well, but sometimes they don't give the wrong. They give the how, but not the why. So Can you out there? Can you replay that? <laughs> sure. Sometimes the FAQ pages give the how to do something, but they don't necessarily give the why to do it. Thank you. So it, sometimes that's what we're telling the Voyagers, you know, yes, we recommend you do it this way because these things help. For instance, adding a link to the profile of the children in the body of the biography of the parent or adding links to the siblings in the children's profiles. Why? Well, one of the reasons is because profiles sometimes accidentally get disconnected or profiles get merged and having those links there can help things can help identify where the pieces parts came from and get them back to the right places. It also makes it easier on the reader. You're reading down through this biography that you've developed and it's nice and it's long, it's got a lot of detail and it's got the name of, the name of somebody. 
if you've got to scroll all the way back to the top to figure out what it is. Whereas if you've got the link there, you can click the link over to that profile, come back and forth and, and go back and forth. It makes it easier for the reader. Yeah, we were talking about that on Wednesday about adding the links into the bio. Yeah. And also how it gives the, so that little thing where you can hover over it and it gives you a quick glance. Yep. But also I was saying as well, the, when you add links to a biography, like internal links and Wikitree, it actually helps with our search rating on Google. Yep, that it helps. does. That's a side, a side plus. <laughs> <laughs> and also, and something that I'm working on developing um, the reasons of why for us is using words in our links. The anchor text makes a difference in SEO also. Click here is not good text inside of a bio because 9,000 things that say click here, to, um, Google actually will count us down on that. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you've got, um, you know, National Archives Record Group X as the link text, it's better. And just so everyone knows, for everyone's knowledge, SEO is search engine optimization. Right. Just a fun fact. <laughs> so we're we're trying to do all of those kind of things to make sure that as people are working on their profiles that they're developing these skills. And what we're asking of them is that they do it with their own watch list, with profiles they haven't developed. And when they're finished, we ask them to, we strongly encourage them. We used to ask them to commit to it, but we had multiple members saying that commitment felt too strong and they didn't want to take the voyage because they didn't want to make a commitment, but we're strongly encouraging them to continue working their own watch list about one a week. Even if they think that they've completely finished a profile, read it through. You may find a typo. Do the, use the research tool on it. A new database may have been released and you may have a new source that you didn't know about. Um, run run a Google search on it. it there, somebody else out there may be looking for the same thing and have it on a blog instead of at Wikitree and you may find a new cousin you didn't know about. But we ask them to continue working their own watch list because as they finish going through their watch list the first time, then they're going to get more involved in the community at Wikitree and as I know both of you know how busy we can get at Wikitree that we kind of don't ever do our own genealogy anymore. Just today, hey. during the, just today during the, the question of the week, I, I just started going off on all these little rabbit holes and I was like, no, I'm supposed to be looking at all of these. <laughs> yeah, That's exactly. And we get so involved with everything else that we can do that we forget to, to touch base on our own genealogy. And doing this one, at least one profile of our own genealogy every week keeps our toes in our own genealogy. And it, it can help avoid burnout, actually. And so, you know, that's one of the things that we're really working. So we have them sort their watch list by last edited date. Look at their oldest edits. Yeah, that's a good, oh, that's idea. A good idea. I yeah. probably I probably will start doing that because I have not <laughs> touched my tree really in a very long time. Oh, I'm still uh, cleaning up a Jedcom import. <laughs> I'm still working. Oh, really? Oh yeah, it's bad. Oh, no. I'm still working on my Galdenathon, my Galdenathon. So. That'll go till the end of the year, yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, we encourage anybody that would like to run through the voyage if you. If you think that you know everything already, and we've had a couple of, of we've had a couple of people say, "Oh, well, you know, I I learned all of that during one of the trails." And so I said to the guy, I said, "Okay," I said, "Well, I ran through these, and I have these questions about this profile." And he came back to me. He said, "Okay, good points. I fixed those." And he said, "So, so, you know." this is another one. And I, he said, this is my second one. And I ran through this and I said, okay, I have these questions. He said, Oh, good point. 
He said, well, maybe I said, so, so he sent me a third one. I said, so does this mean you do want to take the voyage after all? He said, well, yeah, I guess I should. <laughs> and so he has, and he's completed it already. It didn't take him long because he knew, he knew how to do the basics already. It was the learning how to do the more, the verification of the facts and getting as many facts in to prove the relationships and stuff. That was the part that the voyage really helped him and bless you. Get out of here, whatever Thank devil you. is attacking Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's a lot of fun. And what we do once somebody completes the voyage, we, we look at whether we're ready to take on another guide, whether we think the person would be a good fit for the other guides that we already have, and what they can bring to the team. And then if we feel like they're a good fit, we invite them in. And if it fits into their scheduling and everything else, we bring on more guides. That's how we got, um, Melissa wasn't ready to come in when she first finished the, um, the voyage. But now about four months later, she's come back to me and said, yeah, I think, I think I'm ready. And if you need me, I'm ready to take it on. So that's how we got our fifth one. Some of our, our people are posting, Brian's posting some stuff, Hillary, other people are talking about things that they found while they were working uh, on stuff. Uh, Pip is commenting on Pip. Uh, <laughs> and then Hillary's, uh, Hillary's got a um, JEDCOM she'd like you to help her with. <laughs> <laughs> My JEDCOM, and I think Hillary's is in the same condition. Ours came in when you literally could dump a JEDCOM in before you started, before we changed to the new process where you add them to each one. Mm -hmm. I've got a, mine was 3,500 people. And, and they mm -hmm. all have some kind of source. I mean, it's not their, it's not that they're unsourced. They're just not pretty Let's and they're see. not well sourced. <laughs> I, I thought joining WikiTree as my opportunity to do a genealogy do-over. I that's added the way every I treat profile mine. for every person that I've added by, you know, in like manually. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way I'm treating my JEDCOM now is as a do over. My people are created, but everything else is, is subject to close scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And thank goodness for um, Rob's AGC tool. And tell us about that. Um, it's an extension for WikiTree. It's a Chrome extension. And it, you and what does AGC stand for? I don't know. I, <laughs> Hillary might know what awesome the real one is. genealogy. <laughs> Hillary Murder. may know what the real one is. I call it awful, awful JEDCOM cleanup. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Hillary came on to talk about that. Automated JEDCOM cleanup tool. Okay, yeah. automated. I call it awful because that's what it's working. <laughs> but not because it's awful, but because no, it's, it's not awful. Normal. The JEDCOMs are awful. Yeah. Um, so it's a Chrome extension. You install it. And then when you edit a profile that has JEDCOM stuff in it, if it if the extension will work with it, the button appears on the button bar above the edit box. And you click it and it it takes the ancestry, excuse me, ancestry sources that are separated out with the spans and it brings them together and it takes all of the name, 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 and it creates a paragraph with the was born and the date mm -hmm. and, and the parents were, and it does it all for you. And then you can tweak it and you can turn it off and on. If you don't like the way it looks or you don't remember what it had before, you can turn it back off. And you can tweak it and then save it. And it is saving me a lot of time. We actually, we actually did have, we actually do have a live cast about that. If you're looking, yeah. um, if you just want to look for AGC, like in our YouTube search. Um, yeah, I think Hillary was on with you at that yeah. time, wasn't mm -hmm. she? Yeah. It was like, when you said AGC, I was like, what? But then once you said what it was, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Chip has a, has a little question about, he doesn't know how to add them to the table. What? What uh, the um the table for the mining disaster? Yeah. 
Because I know he said that was what he was working on, was mining disasters. Do, we, do you have a link to AGC on the profile? Um, yes, he says for the mining disaster. Okay, you're going to have to ask somebody other than me because I don't work the mining disasters. I know how to work tables and I can work with him one on one, but I don't work with the mining disasters specifically, so I'm not sure. Hillary may be able to help him. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Uh, Mindy may be able to have him. I know she's been working with some disaster stuff. What you looking for there, kid? Um, the AGC, so people just the main page of it. So oh, it, it's help apps, and then it's in there, but it's space. It. It's a space tree AGC. So yeah, it is an ex it is an ex a Chrome extension. It's so a you Chrome won't have to be extension. Using Chrome. Um, and you just it's an extension on your browser. Um, and like we said, they we did have a live cast about it. So if you just do a search on YouTube, you can find it. And Hillary does a great job talking about it. And we she shows us how it works. Um, yeah. So it's really nice. Mm -hmm. And then just quick, how do we how do we join? I have the G2G, but can anybody join the profile improvement project? Anybody can join the project. And if you're already a member of the project and you want to run through the voyage, please go ahead and add, add an answer anyway so that we can get you scheduled onto the voyage. Um, we have a bunch of people who are grandfathered into the Profile Improvements Project who never went through the voyage because we have only recently started it. So you so, have to do the voyage if you want to join the project. You do now, yes. You did not used to. And so um, that's the current join method for the profile improvements project. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about the, what's your favorite part of the project, uh, Debbie? My favorite part? Mm-hmm. Now the voyage, working with the voyagers. Yeah. Before that, it was probably um, working with the unknowns project which is a sub project uh, focused on helping find names for people, for profiles that were added as unknown. For instance, Mr. and Mrs. Tom Jones, who was Mrs. Jones, we don't know. And so she's, at, she's in Wikitree as unknown, unknown, wife of Tom Jones. And so members of the unknowns project are focusing on that. And I think Esme is going to come on and talk with you guys at a different time about the unknowns project, but that and the sorcerers, which is not really a sub project. They're an affiliated project. Um, I really enjoy working with the sorcerers. I think that's your favorite thing. Sourcing. You love the source. Of I love sourcing. I love sourcing and I don't love just sourcing myself. Part of the reason I love sourcing so much is I'm curious by nature and by a finding the source satisfies the curiosity, but learning about new places to find sources feeds that curiosity. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does make sense. I love WikiTree. Mm. <laughs> WikiTree means Wiki. my sense of curiosity too. Mm. Yeah. Learn yeah. something new every. Yep. Every day. Every day. Every day you learn something new, and every day you improve your profiles when you lose learn something new. It's just it's so good. Yeah. And I love sharing it with other people. I love. I love the excitement other people get from learning something new. I agree. Yep. Like I, I may have found one of my, I may have been able to jump the pond finally. Oh, cool. I, I haven't been able to jump the pond with any of my ancestors, but one of my webinars I did last week for legacy family tree the uh, somebody contacted me who watched that and said, "Hey, I know where you're from in Ireland." I'm oh, like, wow. <laughs> and they said, "Add your name to our uh, DNA project," and I did. And they said, 
your dad matches 69 people. You match 70. Wow. And I'm like, great. I might, I might have relatives from Valley, Valley Carey County Antrim. About that, Ooh, I don't know where that is, but that sounds super cool. It is. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. Yes. And just well, my exciting is that North Carolina probate records are coming online more and more at Family Search, mm -hmm. and I found the um, probate for my three-time great-grandfather naming my two-time great-grandfather as his son. Nice. So I've got that one now too. So I just keep climbing those. My grandmother knew all of those people and she knew those things and she told me, so I know it's accurate. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> but now I have the proof. I have the document showing it. And you know, that's, that's, it's that sourcing thing. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. So we are at the hour mark. So unless I see any last minute questions or Debbie, you want to put in a last minute, you know, and say something, say something else about the project. But it's been so much, there's been so much information. <laughs> I'm sure everybody learned something. I want to throw one thing out there. I have had multiple people contact us saying, saying some version of everybody ought to have to do X. I had one person say to me that everybody who signed the honor code should have to take the voyage. I need people to understand we're talking about approximately 1500 people per month. Okay. That is not a feasible, mm. <laughs> that is not a feasible thing to do. We cannot feasibly do it. Great idea. Um, we need a lot more guides before we'd ever be able to do something like that. But I'm more than willing to work with people who want to toss around ideas to set up a training program that is feasible. So if you have any ideas, please do contact us because we're looking for ways to make it more accessible. Uh, are you talking about improving the profile improvement project? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Great so, to have you today. Thank you, Debbie. Thanks. Yes, thanks thank for you, inviting Debbie, me. For coming on. So I guess we will see everybody next weekend. Um, and until then, we will see you. Thanks for watching, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.